Belief is the human capacity to imagine, to be creative, to hope and dream, to infuse the world with meanings, and to cast our aspirations far and wide, limited neither by personal experience nor material reality. Believing is a commitment, an investment, a devotion to possibilities. Beliefs permeate neurobiologies, bodies, and ecologies, acting as dynamic agents in evolutionary processes. The human capacity for belief the specifics of belief and our, diverse, and our diverse belief systems shape, structure, and alter our daily lives, our societies, and the world around us. In this tutorial, we will show you how to find specific journal articles using the library catalogue. The university subscribes to over 18,000 journals across a variety of subjects, most of which are available electronically. To find a specific journal article using the library catalogue, we need to search by the journal name as individual article titles are not listed in the catalogue. Green chemistry is a, is a concept designed to develop technologies which allow chemistry to be practiced with minimal damage to the environment or in an environmentally compatible way. And it's meant to cover both chemical processes and chemical products. The center, if you would, set up about seven or eight years ago, and the idea was to provide a hub of activities that covered fundamental research work, industrial collaboration, but also educational developments. So we work with schools and on public projects as well, and also networking. So we network out to well over 1,000 people around the globe. In animals, a movement is coordinated by a cluster of neurons in the spinal cord called the central patterns generator CPG. This produces signals that drive muscles to contract rhythmically in a way that produces running or walking, depending on the pattern of pulses. A simple signal from the brain instructs the CPG to switch between different modes, such as going from a standstill to walking. For all his fame and celebration, William Shakespeare remains a mysterious figure with regards to personal history. There are just two primary sources for information on the Bard, his works, and various legal and church documents that have survived from Elizabethan times. Naturally, there are many gaps in this body of information, which tells us little about Shakespeare the man. For many years, the favorite horror story about abrupt climate change was that a shift in ocean currents could radically cool Europe's climate. These currents, called the overturning circulation, bring warm water and warm temperatures north from the equator to Europe. Susan Lozier, an oceanographer at Duke University, says scientists have long worried that this ocean circulation could be disrupted. Also, malaria is something that is a very complex disease with this complex life cycle. That means that if you're going to eliminate it, you have to be able to target cute parasites and humans. You have to be able to target parasites in the mosquitoes, that mosquito population. And so that requires a lot of resources. It requires really good planning in a health system across all these different levels. And so I think the political capital that you need for that, the educational infrastructure you need for that, the economic resources you need for that are quite a challenge. For a long time now, it's been a widely accepted and rarely questioned belief that a strong corporate culture goes hand in hand with success. However, a recent study has cast some doubt on this principle. After all, the authors of the report argue for culture. A company's buildup may be strong, but wrong. 
there is little point in every employee marching to the same tune if they are all marching in the wrong direction. Financial markets swung wildly yesterday in frenzied trading market by further selling of equities and fears about an unraveling of the global carry trade. At the same time trading in the European credit markets in London was exceptionally heavy as traders frantically reassessed their appetite for risk prompting wild swings in the prices of the key derivatives. It was the third day of frenetic activity in the European credit markets, suggesting that equity market swings were prompting a wider repositioning of investors in a host of asset classes. Rebuilding carbon-rich agriculture soils is the only real productive, permanent solution to taking excess carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. She's frustrated that scientists and politicians don't see the same opportunities she sees. This year Australia will emit just over 600 million tons of carbon. We can sequester 685 million tons of carbon by increasing soil carbon by half a percent on only 2% of the farms. If we increased it on all of the farms, we could sequester the whole world's emissions of carbon. Now that story's been scorched, as only part of contingency planning. But it was a symptom of the dramatic turn of events in South Australia, and it flushed out other remarks from water academics and people like Tim Flannery indicating that things were really much worse than had been foreshadowed, even earlier this year. So is Adelaide, let alone some whole regions of South Australia, in serious bother? Considering that the vast amount of its drinking water comes from the beleaguered Murray, something many of us outside the state may not have quite realised, is their predicament something we have to face up to as a nation? Two paintings, both called sunflowers, are generally accepted as the finest of several depictions of the thick stemmed, nodding blooms that Van Gogh made in 1888 and 1889 during his time in Arles. The first is now in the collection of the National Gallery in London, and the second is in the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam. Van Gogh referred to this work as a repetition of the London painting. But art historians and curators have long been curious to know how different this repetition is from the first. Should it be considered a copy, an independent artwork, or something in between? An extensive research project conducted over the past three years by conservation experts at both the National Gallery and the Van Gogh Museum has concluded that the second painting was not intended as an exact copy of the original example, said Ella Hendricks, a professor of conservation and restoration at the University of Amsterdam, who was the lead researcher on the project. There are some 200 vehicles of tomorrow. There are some 250 million cars in America. 250 million cars in a country with just over 300 million people. And most of those vehicles, of course, are gas-powered. This poses a huge challenge given the limited supplies of oil and the growing urgency of the global warming crisis. But there's good news, according to our guests today, and that is we have the know-how and the technology to build sleek, fast automobiles that don't use gasoline. These vehicles of tomorrow are powered by hydrogen, electricity, biofuels, and digital technology, and they already exist. So what's stopping us from putting them on the roads? Our guest today will help answer that. Begin with, you should be standing on the main floor of the British Library. British Library is situated in the Euston Road next to some pipe crustacean press, in the foyer to the left of the information desk. It was a large white staircase. Follow this up towards the gallery at the top of the stairs pause and look to your left for attention. This is Robert Cotton, born in 1570, and died in 1631. Cotton was a member of Parliament but he's mainly known as a great antiquarian collector of manuscripts. 
It is the covenant we have a great depth and the survival of many English manuscripts. Thank you.